Hello and welcome. My name is Conrad. I'm one of the co-founding members of the Nonprofit Association, the ULR Exchange, and responsible for the technology. Thank you very much to the Force Asia 21 team to give us a chance here to talk. This is very kind of you. And in this talk, we're going to take a closer technical look at Diva. Diva is the software package which is licensed on the AGPL version 3. And this is what we're producing at the nonprofit association Diva Exchange. Um, we already had a chance this year to talk at FOSTEM, but there it was rather an introductionary talk. So uh, if you'd like to get an introduction, please take a look at this video. In this talk, according to the feedback uh, of the community we got, we'd like to take rather a technical path. So we're taking a closer look at how to install Diva, how to set up its containers, and to make it run on your, on your local device. This is all about how to become your local I2P based, fully distributed bank. Because this is what Diva is all about. It's distributed banking technology for everyone. I suggest that we take a look at the agenda now and then let's get started. At the association Exchange, we saw that users miss an elegant and secure solution to trade and store their digital values like cryptocurrencies. They want to enjoy full privacy protection, they want to enjoy independence and self-determination. So we created the free and open source software package called Diva. And as I said, it's open, it's free and it's fully distributed and it distributed and it protects the privacy of the end users. So it's banking technology for everyone. And that's what we're developing at the nonprofit organization and or association Diva.exchange. The Diva, the association Diva.exchange, by the way, is open to everyone. So if you want to participate, you can do that. Please just join over our website. We're working on uh, technology solutions. That's what I said. The technology is peer-to-peer -peer, and we also cooperate with universities currently in Switzerland. So we want to be scientific, agnostic, and we're 100% free and open source of software. The users of Diva, so of the software, they usually want the following. They want to allocate their digital values in an entirely self-determined manner. They want to have exclusive control over their data and values, and they want to earn digital values as fees by participating in the network or being part of the infrastructure. We're, create, we're striving to create user and environment-friendly applications at Diva.exchange. Now, the application stack, which consists of I2P, the blockchain layer, which is the distributed storage, the backend and the front end is our next topic. Let me show you here a few slides so that we get into it. The application stack of Diva consists of several layers. The network layer is based on I2P and I2P is privacy by design. That's a peer-to-peer -peer network and the messages uh, travel over multiple no nodes taking different routes inbound to um, to a recipient and outbound back to the sender. It's end-to-end -end encrypted and the garlic messaging protects both the identity of the sender and recipient and also the message content. Faulty remote network nodes cannot put privacy or anonymity of another node at risk. There is no dependency to central infrastructure and I2P, which is coming in two different flavors, uh, Java or C++, is long-standing and a very proven open source project. At Diva.exchange, we do support the research currently together with the University of Lucerne, researching I2P, its stability, its scalability, etc. The next layer is the storage layer. It has to be fully distributed, so it's a blockchain. We're using Hyperledger IROHA currently, which is a very lightweight and performance-oriented distributed storage. The consensus is uh, simple and leads to energy efficiency, which is very important to us. But we're very open for a, for a pluggable blockchain storage engine and also a pluggable consensus protocol implementation. Currently, there is also research running on, on the 
on the storage layer by two students and we're working there together with the Zurich University of Applied Science in Switzerland. Then there is the application itself, so the Diva application, which consists of a back and a front end. The repository is found at codeberg.org slash diva.exchange slash diva. It's a Node.js application. We do have minimal dependencies and we're very lightweight. Yes, we're striving for elegant and modern code. That's what we're doing. And now in these weeks and days, we're working on the trading engine implementation for multiple digital values and cryptocurrencies. If you'd like to jump in and help out with the community and uh, with Diva.exchange and with Diva, you're very much welcome. We're an entry-level friendly project, so just get in touch with me. As you can see on the agenda, now it's time to get started with the installation. We're going to install Diva on your local environment. We're doing this on, on Linux. We're using Docker containers, so if you're familiar with Docker, that's uh, pro because of the current the current status of Diva of the Diva application enables us or allows us to install it within Docker containers. So we're going to pull up the whole environment environment which consists of several layers like I2P, the blockchain layer, the backend, and the front end um, within several several independent containers. This is what we're calling Diva Dockerized within our repositories. Now let's get started and I'll guide you three through step by step. Um, at the end, we're going to have a running local installation of your own bank on your own device. And now it's time to install Diva locally. There are two possibilities to do that. A, as a local seven node network without I2P, by the way, it could also be 11 nodes or three nodes, but these seven nodes are just the example we're going to use here. And B, by joining the existing Diva network using I2P, that's the other possibility. Um, we're going to use here a Linux console, so you're going to also need some Docker skills and some Node.js skills. At the end, a Node.js application will run locally and give you the functionality of, of Diva. Now, first of all, we need access to the code, which is here located in the code repository. So it's on codeberg.org slash diva.exchange slash diva. Here we are on the develop branch. Now, if you scroll down, you're going to see the readme. And within the readme, there you also um, find the instructions on how to get started. So how to do your local installation. First of all, we will do the seven node local installation. And um, as described here in the, in the readme, you need, have, you need to have Docker and Docker Compose available on your system. So that's all described here. And then it's really quite simple. You just, after you have access to the code, which is usually a clone, you just execute the installation script um, within your shell and you can do this as a regular user but the script itself then will need super user access so it's going to ask you for your super user password because docker requires um, a privileged access all right we're here now in the linux terminal in the bash and we have cloned the source code from codeberg.org slash diva.exchange slash diva. Let's take a look at the folder structure here. Yes, this is the code from the code repository. And as it said in the readme, we're going to start the install script. If necessary, it's going to ask you for the privileged user password. So the root user because Docker needs access to it. What's happening right now is it's pulling all the necessary images from the, from the Docker hub. Um, cleaning up your environment to have a proper start and then it starts the database containers and uh, IROHA containers and the Explorer and the API and as soon as this is done it's installing the Node.js application and the local SQLite database and as soon as this is done like right now it's waiting for the API so that's one of the Docker containers to become ready and as soon as the API is there, it's executing the installer itself. And ta-da, the whole Diva 
um, application including seven notes is now available. Let's take a closer look here quickly using Docker whether all containers are running. And yes, we're seeing that here seven nodes are properly running since about 40 seconds. The API is there and the Explorer is there. So that's a great start. So now back to the Codeberg code repository for a moment. So if we're back here on the Codeberg repository, we see that here within the readme, it's also shown that these containers are, should be running. And that's what we just checked in the terminal just before because we executed install. And this install has, has created local local iroha blockchain nodes so these seven nodes which are now our distributed local storage it's it's only local so we're not connected to i to the i2p testnet uh, of diva yet and i suggest that in the beginning it's always kind of before we before we start the diva application it's useful to take a look whether the blockchain is properly running and if you wait a few minutes then and i already started it here and on this tab that uh, the blocks are created because the API is writing is writing blocks from time to time, every every minute more or less. If you're clicking on one of those blocks, you see the detailed data, the JSON data, which is forming this block. All right, back to Codeberg, and as you see here in the README. Um, we should execute bin start and that's exactly what we're going to do. This bin start is now starting the Diva application. So back to the terminal, back to the bash. Let's execute bin start. And what's happening now is, all right, it's pulling those Docker images again, which is need, which are needed for the database layer and for the blockchain. And uh, now it's starting the node JS um, application. And it tries to fetch from the running API the, the token to uh, get access to the local to the local web application. And then as you can see, an HTTP server is listening, a WebSocket server is listening, and an API is um, has, and the connection to the API has, has established. Back to Codeberg, to the README, because the README says that we should have now this here available. So open this in a new tab and let's see whether um, Diva is here. So yes, Diva is here. And let me switch here the language to English. Um, this is a pure demo application, but it's it's fully functional, so we can like add here some order book data. Let's buy 10 at 100. Uh, this is just, as I said, a local order book. And what's happening now, you're placing an order on the market. In this, in this example here, it's a buy order and you also can place your own sell orders. Let's sell 24 200. And um, As you can see, by the way, that's what just saw. We have here a bug in the user interface. It's all alpha, but the data is written to the blockchain. So what we're going to see here are now the order book data of BTC XMR, XMR on, on the blockchain. So this is all properly working. And fact is we do have, um, we do have a running Diva application and yes, we need um, lots of support and time also to um, to finalize this 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 exchange and this banking application. And you're very welcome to join us. Did I already say that? Yes, I did properly. All right. Okay. Let's wrap it up. Let's go back to Kurtberg. Um, we have running Docker containers which form the blockchain layer, which do contain Iroha. Then. We do have started using bin start the node.js application and the result is on localhost a Diva application which is based on the local blockchain network. Okay, that was the installation. Now you have a running 
own bank on your local device. As you can see back on the agenda, we'd like to talk shortly about the community. So how to get involved as a developer, as a designer, or help us communicate uh, in several languages, or help us to, to document and to test. As you know, we closely cooperate with universities and schools, currently in Switzerland, and we're an open association to everyone. So if you'd like to um, do some research based on DIVA, wherever you are located as a university or a school, just contact us, get in contact with, uh, with Carolyn of DIVA.exchange and set up a um, scientific partnership. We're very much interested in having a very scientific and agnostic look at the project DIVA. As you know, as you know, everything what we're doing is um, HEPL3 version, HEPL version 3, licensed or compatible. So all the work is public, all the work is, is open source. And so is the research work. Additionally, we do have code repositories, which are mainly on codeberg.org slash diva.exchange and then married to GitLab and to GitHub. And by the way, if you like to get involved as a, as a, as a community manager, we're always looking um, at some way to manage our issues and to look at our issues um, on the code repository platform. So just get in touch with me. Uh, please use our Telegram chat or send me an email. Use the website diva.exchange to find our contact details. We believe at the association diva.exchange we're very entry-level friendly and we're a very open and diverse community. So you as a developer, as a designer, as a front-end designer, you're very, very welcome to just join in. Join us in the chat, get in touch with us, talk about um, your vision of Diva and what you like to do with it, and I'm sure we're going to have a very constructive and interesting talk. Now, thank you very much for listening to this presentation, and I'm very curious about all your questions and your open feedback. Everything you tell us, we can learn from and we can improve at Diva.exchange. We can make the software better, we can make our communication better. So you're very, very much invited to ask all your questions you have in mind. And therefore, we now continue with Q&A. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your support of open source software, especially AGPL version 3 projects. And do not hesitate to donate to Diva.exchange. All right. See you in the Q&A. Thank you.